want to make sure that you understand how to interpret sound waves when they are shown in a diagram. So let's compare three things here. Sound A, sound B, and sound C. As always, it's important to first define the x and y axes. The x-axis, in this case, is frequency. So I'm going to draw the frequency spectrum. The y-axis usually is in depicting sound waves. The y-axis is intensity or amplitude. So let's look at wave A. Given that this is frequency, you can immediately tell that it's a complex wave because it is showing a lot of different frequencies. If we wanted to write down what they might be, let's go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. That's telling us that this wave is harmonic because each one of those frequency components is separated by an identical amount. 100 hertz. This topic is going to come back when we look at pitch perception because this is a harmonic wave and you'd actually perceive a pitch of 100 hertz. I hope you remembered the term for this lowest component. This is the fundamental frequency and it is described by this term F sub O. We don't have an F sub 1. F sub O is F sub 1. So this will be F2, F3, F4, and so on up the chain. So these harmonics, as you can see, are integer multiples of the fundamental. The fundamental times 2 is 200 hertz, times 3 is 300 hertz, times 4 is 400 hertz, and so on. If a guitar player is playing an A, an A3, I believe it would be, its fundamental frequency is going to be 220 hertz. Its F2 is going to be 440. F3 would be 3 times 220, or 660. So the next one would be 880, and so on up the chain. This helps form the basis of consonance and dissonance, these coincident harmonics versus clashing harmonics. Now let's look at another wave. This is wave B. This sort of thing depicted again a little bit later on. Just for the sake of efficiency, let's pretend that the x-axis is exactly the same and that these components are separated by the same 100 hertz. It's a harmonic complex tone with a fundamental of 100 hertz and with uh, F2 is 200 hertz and F3 is 300 hertz and so on. You can immediately see that in this particular wave, it's odd order harmonics, F3, F5, and so on, have a higher intensity than its even order harmonics. Next, you can see that wave C has only one component. So, when we take these three waves and we depict them a different way, let's now depict them with the x-axis being time and not frequency, I hope you'll be able to look at these three frequency plots and recognize that this wave A over here would look kind of like this, especially if those high frequency components extended out, you know, to F20 and F21 and so on, it would begin to resemble a square wave because all of these components, these partials, are the same amplitude. This wave over here, wave B, has uh, more energy in its odd order harmonics than in its even order harmonics. It would look kind of like this. And I hope you can guess what this one is. It has only one frequency component. So naturally, it is a sine wave. Thank you.